Today we are starting off in Stevie's garage. A lot of you guys may recognize this humble garage. This is actually the same garage where I rebuilt my S13. So shout out to Stevie for the opportunity. Yo. Today what we have here is another project. This is one of Stevie's cars. It's his S15 Silvia. And unfortunately he found some rust on it. He decided to take on a full rebuild. Props to him. Before season opener. A month before a season opener, yeah. <laughs> That's how it is, right? Props to him for going on the full rebuild, full refresh right before the drift season. So we're just gonna do some rust repair today and add some tubs to the car. This red trailer fender is actually off of the trailer that we drove across the country with. It held our tires for the drift events. And it wasn't even just drift events we needed the tires for because we kept popping tires along the way. <laughs> if any of you guys saw that video, you know what we're talking about. Anyways, it was a good time, but we're gonna get started on trying to test fit how large we want the tubs. We have an SR in this hatch already that we can use as a reference to line up our piping. First thing we're gonna do is cut this thing right down the center. So we have two sides and we'll cut off both end pieces. We've got the tubs chopped in half. We're just test fitting some additional panels that we're gonna be filling in some holes with. And then we need to determine how high we want this and how far out we want this and inward and outward. So there's three main locations to keep in mind when putting tubs in. Another thing is there's a curve on both sides. That's gonna look kind of weird. So we're gonna cut off the outer curve and leave this inner curve because it'll look nice when it's all done. did tack one tub into position. We only have two little tacks here, and that's because we don't want to proceed any further until we confirm the fuse box still fits here. Damn, that's your whole engine bay harness? Yep. Damn. And some of the interior. Oh, it has interior on it too? Yeah. Sick. It goes like this. All right. Technically. Technically. Dude, that fuse box is massive. That hoe ain't gonna fit. Yeah, here, let's see if you can bring it up from the bottom. Trying to help you fish it through. Maybe yes, maybe no. I mean, you could probably make it work. Could maybe. But then we gotta think about the intercooler pipe. I guess it could fit right there still. Yeah, it's gonna have to get modified anyway for the intake. That might work for you. I mean, I could just trim off this whole bottom section and like move the connectors up too. Yeah, that's so true. So then it could hang down further. A good idea. We got our base oh. plate figured out here. This will amend for the fuse box to fit correctly. We started with this side because this is the limiting side for the clearancing. We don't have a fuse box on that side, so we're just gonna match it to whatever the dimensions are over here. Yes. You ready for attack? You yeah. look ready. I wanna just measure it real quick. All right, you quick ready? measure. Measure. Measure twice, just weld once. Okay, you ready? Yes, sir. Oh, that was hot as hell. <laughs> yeah, that'll look really bad. Dude, that's sick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, this is so funny because we're, like, so worried about this, but I'm still going to have clearance issues in the rear. Oh, yeah. I still do on mine as well. And in three short hours, this is how much work we were able to accomplish. It's definitely not done by any means, but getting the ball rolling is the hardest part to any job. And props to Stevie for taking on this rust repair task. It's not an easy job, but it is always worth it. When you discover rust on your project car, it's not always the best feeling, but it's not always the hardest thing to fix. You just need a grinder and a welder and some motivation. Something that I have found that helps is writing a list of all the things that you need to do. And then once you complete a task and cross it off, it becomes very satisfying. And I've almost become addicted to that satisfaction. And this is one major check mark for Stevie's engine bay. What do you guys think of the tubs? I personally like tubs. Cleans up the engine bay a lot. We left all of this open still, but we're gonna have a backing plate on the inside of this trailer fender. And it's gonna come down to about here. 
but we wanted to make sure that we bridged all of this first because we do have to repair some of the rust on the bottom of the shock tower. This is very common on S chassis. If the S chassis has been through at least one winter, maybe even two, this is bound to happen, which is why it's always frowned upon to drive these in the winter. But I mean, as long as you're down for the rust repair later in life, but props to Stevie for not just parting this thing out because 90% of people would have. And at the end of the day, it's just metal. You can just cut and weld some new metal on there. Just takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of elbow grease, but you can get it done. Franzi is currently on her way over with the Integra sedan work truck. And we're going to test fit these R32 GTR wheels, at least on the front. I know for sure they're going to fit in the rear, but I only have two wheels with tires mounted. I do have a full set of these, unlike most other wheels that I own. But while she's on the way, I figured this would be a good time to open this box that we got from Bai Yi. In the last video, I showed how you can import these parts on your own. So go check out that video if you want to learn more. Actually, let's do it on the workbench. I showed the shipping methods and how you can buy stuff and order it and ship to the warehouse. Either way, we finally got it in. Now, yeah, this is a pretty small box, but it does have multiple items in there. This is for Tim's RC car. To save on shipping, all of us friends will order through one account. That way we can bundle it all into one box. I think most of this is RC parts. Yeah, this is for my friend Matt. This is for smokes. You get the idea. It's all wrapped up very nicely, very secured. And this is without the additional package protection. Now, if I were shipping something a little more fragile, I'd probably add the extra packing just to be safe. But... Oh, actually, I was very excited for these. You'd be surprised, but even in RC world, it's difficult to find some of these real wheels. These have been long discontinued. And they are none other than Work XT7s. It was easier to find the real wheel than the RC wheel. Took me over a year to find these. And they're also approved by work. So they're real. These are real works. Seven millimeter offset. I'm not sure what this one was. Oh, this is the Gloria logo for the front grill. I've mentioned this before in a recent video, but the front logo on the Gloria is actually a Cedric logo. Sorry, I can't get a good angle of it. The garage is pretty close to it. It looks more like a Lincoln badge, but this is the badge it's supposed to have. Put that on the to-do list for the Gloria. <laughs> RC parts for Nate. A lot of RC parts coming through. Oh, these are for Tim. These are AVS Model T6. It's funny because he just got these in real life as well. And then these are old stock, so these were hard to find for him. But now he has a set. Now we have matching real wheels to RC wheels. Last but not least, a Greddy sock. You're probably wondering, why would you need a sock? No, this is not a sock for your foot. This goes around your brake reservoir or clutch master cylinder or power steering. It's required for, I don't know about most drift events, but some drift events require you to have a sock around your reservoirs. So that'll be a cool little piece. <laughs> keep it coming, keep it coming. All right, that's good. All right, let's see if these fit. Pit stop. Actually, let's probably jack up the car first. <laughs> Car's still running, got that heat going. All right, so these were 16 by seven plus 45, which is kind of crazy. These R32 GTR wheels are 16 by eight plus 30. So they're gonna be wider. So I have a feeling these are not gonna fit. But it's only one way to find out. Oh, these look sick. Damn. Pit stop. Oh, that was scary. <laughs> that was Dude, I think these are gonna fit. Yeah, once it settles a little bit more. Damn, that looks sick. It kind of matches with the rear wheels. Five spokes on five spokes. Ooh, I'm jealous, these are nice. Got you in style. See, clean up the rest of the car now <laughs> all right yeah let me switch this wheel out next this is so pure i'm out here wrenching she's in the waiting room reading her book what you reading in there this window doesn't roll down what 
What do you guys think? Full set? Yeah, we gotta put the rears on. I need to order the same tires as these so they match. We are at Nick's and we are not working on a car today, unusually. <laughs> We're working on a truck. Yeah, boy. This might be the first truck we've ever worked on on the channel. We're doing some rust repair on here. Uh, he took the bed off, put some new springs, leaf springs and shocks on here. Coated the frame rail. This thing's a 93, right? Yeah, 93, <laughs> dude. Man. That's crazy. I looked at four of these trucks and then this was the first one I looked at and I was just like, you know, I'm gonna go look around. All the other ones were junk. And I was like, I went back to the guy and I was like, yeah, I'll pay that. There you go, there you go. <laughs> yeah, dude, the underside of this is minty. There's a couple spots, but we're gonna repair that today. Luckily, he's already made the pieces we need to weld in, which takes the longest. So this should be a pretty simple process. We're also gonna replace a brace that was on the bottom. That was this piece, right? Oh yeah, that thing that is thing's dope, crusty. Dude. And <laughs> what did you find? <laughs> On a two by two skate rail. I was say I measured it two by two, and I was like, I got the perfect thing, man. My old childhood rail. I learned how to do 50 50s on it. And now, now it's gonna hold your bed up. Now we're gonna make a stubby. <laughs> I was gonna make a pole jam out of that. Oh, what? That's yeah. gonna be sick. I think we could chop this and then make that a longer leg, and then it'll be up higher. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, we can make a nice pole jam. Yeah. So that metal for that rail was the exact gauge and. I guess measurement that he needed, so fabbed it all up. We're gonna weld this back together, having you know tabs so we can weld it to the floor of the bed, and then we'll just weld it onto the bed. We've got the center brace made. We're gonna go ahead and line this up on the bottom of the car. We have to drill out two holes as well to center it. And then we're gonna make sleeves inside of it because ultimately this is what attaches the bed to the frame. This is the midpoint. And this was the old one, so crusty. Nick made some sleeves for the bolts to slide through. That way it's a little bit more structural. some weight on the bed. Yeah. So the bed came out pretty decent. Not bad for a couple hours worth of work. Got the frame welded onto the bottom. The only thing left he's got to do is drill a hole through the bottom here. Well, it's going to go through the top. That way we make sure it's in the right spot. Then he's gonna paint it, coat it, and then reinstall it. Hopefully, you oh, see you out here ready soon. for years to come, man. Yes, sir. I'm, I gotta drive around like this for a couple days. <laughs> I love this like hot rod, like uh, rake with the got. rake. Yeah, just kick yeah, because you still it. gotta so put cool. the fronts on, right? Yeah, yeah, might I as well get all the back work done, all the brakes first, definitely all the rear, get the bed done, and then it's like, all right, then on to the front. Yep, well, cool, man. It was fun hanging with you today. Hey, thank you, Mike. Yeah, dude, anytime. <laughs> Now I have been collecting parts for the 300ZX to boost the KA that's in it. And I'm very torn right now. I don't know if I wanna boost the stock block that's in there right now, or if I wanna build one and then boost it. I don't have much experience with boosting a naturally aspirated engine. The only turbo engine I've ever had actually is the RB25. And that came with a turbo, so I didn't have to do anything crazy. If I do boost it on a stock block, then I'm probably gonna run very low boost while building an engine on the side. That might be the best route. We'll figure it out. I'm still collecting a few parts, so I'll keep you guys updated on it. But I think this is where we're going to end today's video. I know it's kind of a short one, but I want to thank you guys so much for sticking around yet again. See you guys in the next one. Peace.